Hello and welcome to episode 2 of our Let's Make a 2D Survival Sandbox Platformer game. Where this episode, in episode 2, we're going to be working on world generation with, with resources generating in the world and the, generating the world in chunks. So first I made some sprites for the, the dirt, grass, and stone that are shown instead because I changed the materials. Also, one thing that you need to know when making the materials is for these is that you need to create the material, call it iron, because I'm doing iron here. You need to put it in as a stand into the albedo box as a standard shader, but then you need to switch it over to a default sprite. Then you need to get a tile on, your sc on the screen, rename it tile iron or whichever one you're working on. Then add the material, add it as a prefab. So now we have gold, coal, diamond, gold, and iron tiles. Between this episode and last episode, I did make some changes to our world generation script. So I'll go over with those for, with you. Firstly, we're going to make a public float seed, which we're going to hide in the inspector. Then in this line, in the Perlin noise function, we're going to change the X to seed and the y to i plus the transform.position.x divided by smoothness. You will see the reason for this later. Also, we have this, so we instantiate the new tile with the we instantiate the new tile, call it new tile, set its parent to this generate chunk, and then set its transform up position to the to the an x position of what whatever the i value is, and a y position of whatever the j value is. So this script actually generates the chunks. So firstly, we have public game object chunk. So the game object that has, that's the chunk prefab, which I have here, it's just a, an empty with generate chunk on it and all of our settings in it. Then we have, then it automatically finds out how wide the chunks are. Then you enter how many chunks you would like, and add the seed. No, then the seed is generated here as a random number, as a float between negative 100,000 and 100,000. Then it generates. The last x position is negative chunk width, so it will generate a chunk at zero. Then, for int i equals zero, i is less than number of chunks, so this will run number of chunks times. It instantiates a new chunk at the last x position plus another chunk width, no rotation, adds a game object, then generate chunk, its seed, it needed it needed to be hidden because we don't need to because we don't need it. Its seed is the seed value generated, and then we add chunk width to last x. So let's try this. When I press play, generate chunks running on our handler will generate. And here we are. We have a number of chunks, and if I select a chunk, you can see which blocks are in which chunk. So this chunk here contains these blocks. This chunk is the one next to it, and this chunk is the one next to it. Now, in order to populate the chunks with resources effectively, we need to take a stone tile and add a new tag called Tile Stone. You can name it anything you would like, but I'm naming mine Tile Stone so that it is clear what its purpose is. Then, in our Generate Chunk, I'm going to edit the scripts, and I don't need these markers anymore. We're going to have Public Void Populate. Then we're then we're also going to have public game object tile coal public game object tile diamond public game object tile gold and public game object tile iron.
Then in our uh, prefabs folder, we will take our chunk and then add, um, and then we will add our tiles. So the coal tile is this one, the diamond, the gold, and the iron. Then we will set the chances. So public bloat chance coal, public float chance diamond, public float chance gold, and public float chance iron. These are going to be the chances that this, that the game object, not the game object, that the resource generates. So for each game object t in game object dot find game object with tag you want to find all the game objects that we tagged tile stone so what this will do is that it will find all of the game objects tagged tile stone there is only one right now but and it's oh we needed to add the tag to the block to the tile so this is the only game object tagged tile stone currently. Uh, now, also, for each game object G, for each game object T and game object not finding an object tag tile stone, uh, float random equals random dot range 0f 100f. This is because the, we're expecting a percentage chance if if random is less if random is less than chance coal less than or equal to chance coal and also add a a game object so selected tile equals null because otherwise it'll say it isn't assigned if it's less than or equal to chance coal, selected tile equals coal. Is tile coal. Then we just have to repeat this. Else if then select this. Paste and paste. And the last time it's not uh, else. And we don't need an else statement here. So then we just need to replace iron, gold, and diamond. Also at the end of our generate function, we need to populate. If selected tile is not null, instantiate a selected tile at uh, t.transform.position with no rotation and destroy t. In theory, this should work. So in our chunk, we'll have a uh, let's start with a 2% chance of coal, a 0.75% uh, chance of diamond. I calibrated this earlier in my test project. A 0.3125 chance of gold, and a 1% chance of iron. Ah, uh, something is not right. Um, if random is less than or equal to chance coal, the tile is tile coal. Uh, I think we could get rid of these else statements and make it better. And then we'll just rearrange them in... 
uh, in this order. So if any tile is overwritten, it's likely that it will be a diamond tile. So, so coal will overwrite all other tiles, iron will overwrite gold and diamond, gold will overwrite diamond, and diamond will be the rarest one to spawn. Okay, it's still all coal. Is there any of any other resources? Apparently not. Okay, so float random debug.log random. Okay, so let's see what sorts of numbers it's generating. It's taking a while. I'm going to get Unity res to respond, and I'm going to be right back. Commenting out this line and closing unity uh, and reopening it again uh, generate one chunk without debugging There we go. We, we only got coal, but... Okay, now debug the random number. Got a bunch of 50s. Uh, none of these should have theoretically generated coal. Uh, huh. Okay, so... Random is less than or equal to against school. Uh, let's remove these because apparently it only generates coal, which is weird. Okay, only coal. Could it be could it be because the chances aren't great enough? Okay, I'll just even these all out. still all coal. Okay, maybe we need the else's in here. Hmm. Okay, now generate. Now it's only diamond? Okay. Revert this and if okay, so if random is less than diamond, selected tile is diamond. Huh. I'm gonna figure this out and be right back. Okay, there we go. Uh so I added in the else's, removed the less than or equal to's and renamed this to R. And now it works, apparently. So, but it, they're not associated with the chunks when they generate. It's still just, they're being thrown everywhere. So, we're going to have game object, new resource tile, goals instantiate as a game object. New resource tile that transform that parent equals, uh, this dot game object dot transform. You know, I think Unity automatically assumes this dot game object. Let's try this. Uh, yep. So now we should be able to generate multiple chunks with little to no harm. Uh. 
so I figured it out, uh, and now it works perfectly. There needed to be two equal signs here instead of the one I had, because the way it was working was that it was setting uh, t transform.parent to this instead of comparing it. Now the world generation works, and thank you for watching episode two. Be sure to like and comment on this video and support on Patreon if you really enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next episode.